Hello everybody. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about EVs again, uh, but this time that's because uh, my previous video got a lot of questions and remarks and some of the people said that I was spreading fake news because the EV revolution obviously is unstoppable and a whole lot of uh, non sequiturs, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm always willing to check and redo my own calculations and see whether I was wrong or not. Now, in this case, I made the, uh, the, 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 the calculations about Germany alone. Uh, but right now, what I, what I wanted to know was, well, you know what, I'm going to uh, do, your all, do you all and do myself a favor. I'm going to calculate whether BEVs are going to replace cars anytime soon. So the German BEV video, what was my intention? I intended to make a video where I show that Germany is the canary in the coal mine. What I'm telling everybody is, listen, the, the choices that Germany made and, and, and some of the realities with which we have to cope when we talk about Germany, I'm not a German myself, I'm a, I'm a Dutch person, though I live very close to Germany, is that in the West, we are making choices that basically cut into the bottom line, that make that make Western countries and industries in Western countries become uncompetitive. And then some people just take that out of context and they think, okay, you're, you're, you're bashing BEVs, uh, whereas that is not really the case because... Uh, here's something that I have to tell you about battery electric vehicles. Uh, so the most important bit about electric vehicles is while you are driving around with one, uh, you're not emitting as much air pollution as a normal car. This depends obviously on the, the, the input, you know, the way the electricity was generated that you put in your battery. But generally, generally speaking, even if you would use coal or gas, uh, then the emissions from the car itself would be less than they would be from uh, an internal combustion engine. Uh, secondly, because there are less mechanical less mechanical parts, you believe in Zeffelig, as you believe. Because there are less mechanical parts, you need far less lubricants, obviously. Um, and there's less wear and tear, so you have uh, less mechanical issues. And finally, uh, these cars make less noise, and I, I, I believe that the ride itself is pretty comfortable. Um, so, so these are these are positive aspects that I want to share with you about battery electric vehicles. Do I think that they are the be all and end all of of, of personal transportation? No, I don't. Do I believe that they are set to take over the the, the 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 whole world of uh, personal transportation absolutely not i think that the internal combustion engine is here to stay for quite a while longer uh but there's also uh some some negative aspects about the battery electric vehicle first of all uh, it is more expensive than a similar similar uh, vehicle. So what I'm showing you here is the Opel Corsa, which is a European car. Uh, I stands for Imber internal combustion engine, EVS electric vehicle. Obviously, if you look at it from a uh, power perspective, for instance, let's say that you have the, the most expensive internal combustion engine, which has 100 kilowatts of power, and you take the, the cheapest EV with 100 kilowatts of power, then you can see that there is a 123% weight difference. So the power is the same, but the weight, simply the weight of the car itself is different, which means that you need to put more energy into acceleration. You also need to uh, put more power into deceleration. What happens is you get more particulate ma matter during operation of this uh, battery electric vehicle. And also because it's heavier and because you need uh, certain metals to, to make these batteries, uh, there is a higher environmental load during manufacturing. 
Now, first, this is uh, the message that really piqued my interest because this is a response to my previous video. Uh, the person says it's fake news, EV sales are still growing despite the desperate disinformation campaign of Big Oil and Legacy Auto, which is attempting to slow the revolution down. Now, especially look at uh, the way that this sentence is formulated. Um, this makes it makes makes the, 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 the anyone who is reading this believe that I'm, for instance, am in the pocket of big oil of, or legacy auto. And, and and here's the truth. I have never ever had any dealings with fossil fuel companies. Uh, I never had uh, dealings with the top segment of the auto industry. Not even a sales representative because all my cars are bought secondhand and usually uh, from other owners and maybe from a garage somewhere, but never from a uh, a brand dealer. So I have never ever had to deal with a a a brand, a legacy car company. Also, um, it, it states a new solid state battery technology is coming soon in the next five years. And once companies figure out how to mass produce existing prototypes, the internal combustion engine will be dead. I'll bet anyone on this. I'm wondering whether you will bet anyone after you've seen this video. And if you see this video, hi. So this was the picture that he used in order to, to, to prove his point. Uh, you see that the global sales went up to 20% of all cars that were sold during any given time. So let's, it, it, right now it's reality check time. So let's go to sheet one. This was the Opel Corsa comparison sheet. The next sheet, I hope that you can read what I'm doing here. Um, what I've done here is I basically uh, took data from a website where you can see how many battery electric vehicles were sold from 2010, where it starts with seven and a half thousand, all the way up to 2023, 13 million eight hundred thousand. Secondly, what I what I did was I, I I put in the same graph the number of non-electric cars that are sold. So it starts with <laughs> 67 million and it ends with 62,870,000. So as you can see, the number of uh, non-electric vehicles uh, sold is going down. So in essence, the people who say, yeah, EV sales are up, they're right. And my German video is wrong. But the, the trouble here is that people are misinterpreting what I was trying to say with that video. Now, if you look at the total uh, number of cars in the world, First, what you do is you take the cumulative electric vehicle sales. So you start with the seven and a half thousand and you tally all the numbers up. So roughly speaking at this moment, 41 million battery electric vehicles should be roaming the world. Now, if you look at the total number of cars in the world, then it should be around 1.475 billion cars currently. Now, if you take the cumulative figures and you contrast them with each other, then you can see that currently, yes, 41 million cars in the world are battery electric vehicles, but in total, that doesn't constitute much more than 2.78% of the total vehicle uh, volume in the world. And here you can see the, the graph. Let me, let me then <laughs> zoom in. So this little bit of blue over here. Those are the battery electric vehicles that we had in 2023 as a portion of the total volume of electric cars in the world. Now the next sheet, this is pretty interesting. Let me make this bigger so you can read what, what it says. Uh, over here, what I'm, what I'm looking at is how many cars are there per continent, right? And what's the population? Now, all of this data has been scrounged together from different uh, websites. So there may be some uh, inaccuracies here, but I don't think that it, even if you would 
put the correct number in here, it, it, it wouldn't shift the balance that much. So the most interesting thing that I was looking for was the cars per capita figure. So as you can see, there's a, a roughly 0 0.9 cars per person in the United States, 0 0.55 cars per person in Europe, 0 0.2 cars in South America per person, then Oce Asia and Oceania, Oceania, uh, that's 0 0.11, then the Middle East 0 0.13, and Africa 0 0.017. So on average, there are one, there are 0 0.191 cars on average per capita in the world. Now, in order to make a good projection, what we need to do is we need to look at the 2050 population of the world. And this is what I found that people expect the world population to look like by 2050. Now, if we continue car ownership the way it is today uh, at parity, so, so uh, you know, all the figures that you can see in this column over here, then in the end, there will be 1.845 billion cars uh, on the road in 2050 and now without trucks that will be 1.6 billion and that's a difference of 166 million uh, compared to today and this means that the annual growth of cars on the road will be roughly 6.4 million cars per year now let's look at an S-curve because they were talking about S-curves. Uh, I, I try to make a, a reasonable S-curve here. Sorry, sometimes it it fails to, uh, to 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 render the way it should. Now suppose that we get an S-curve and we get EV sales growth up to 35 million. Right, that's what all these figures here are doing. The, there's another thing that we need to take into consideration. Back in 2017, when there were 1.4 billion cars, roughly 4 million, 40 million cars were scrapped. That's about 2.86%. So what I, what I did here was I plotted out a, a total car number all the way up to here to 1.64 billion. I made sure that 2.86% of these cars were scrapped. And then I basically tried to create a, a kind of an S-curve for, uh, renew for renewals, for battery electric vehicles growing up to 35 million, which is uh, slightly more, it's, it's almost double uh, the amount that we have today per year. What you can see is that then the cumulative number of BEVs that will be sold in the world will grow to 932 million cars by 2050. By that time, what we will have is 57% of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles, and we will have 43% of electric vehicles. That's this graph over here that we see over here, this one. So uh, if we will, ma if we would manage to reach up to 35 million car BEV sold per year, uh, then you see that we don't get to uh, de, uh, that, we, that we don't get rid of all the internal combustion engines uh, by 2050. Now, what, if, what would happen if we would be able to build 75 million BEVs and, and sell them each year? Then we could reach 100% BEVs by, I don't know, 2047, 2048. Um, then you get a, a whole, still it's, it, it's not the most pretty of S curves, but it is an S curve, uh, to some degree. Um, so 75 million would get you there, but, but this is only if, uh, the car growth stays the way it is, the car ownership stays the way it is, which is a, a pretty unsafe assumption. We don't know what is going to happen, but let's suppose that. Uh, North America and Europe maintains its level of ownership the way it is, uh, but let's suppose that all the other countries are going to catch up somehow, and they're going to catch up to a level which is not that far-reached. It's 0 0.25 cars per capita. So right now it's uh, 0 0.19, 0 0.1, 0 0.13, 0 0.017. Uh, and we're going to grow to 0 0.25. All right. So then we would end up 
having 2.7 billion cars on the road by 2050. And the difference between today and that is 1.2 billion cars, with an annual growth of 45 million cars. So if we take the 75 million uh, growth S-curve again, which we've done here, uh, then what you get is that the number of uh, ICE cars, so the number of internal combustion engine cars, is still 31% uh, by 2050. So by then, the internal combustion engine is still there. Yes, the battery electric vehicle has taken over as basically the dominant source, or, or not the dominant source, but the dominant means of personal transportation when we're talking about cars, not bicycles, obviously. So... Uh, do I see there a future where the battery electric vehicle can grow up to, let's say, 50 or beyond, 50% uh, or beyond? Yes, I do see that. Uh, if car uh, ownership is going to be less than it is today, then it's even possible. Or if it's per capita, if it's the same as today, then it's possible to reach 100%. But if car ownership per capita keeps growing in the world and depending on how much that growth is, uh, I think it will become increasingly more unlikely that battery electric vehicles are set to take over. So, um, what did we learn? First of all, BEVs are okay, uh, but I think that we are not going to get rid of the internal combustion engine anytime soon. This is probably going to take decades if if we ever manage it that's that's also a question and this is something that i think is very important because i can't can't afford a battery electric vehicle i need a car that can tow something uh buying a bv that can tow anything uh it, 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 it's just cost prohibitive for me. I don't do car loans. The only thing I do loans for is my house. Um, so this means that I have to pay for this BEV with uh, out of pocket. Uh, and honestly, I don't have that much money. I'm not in the bag for big oil. So we need to start thinking about sustainable fuels to uh, basically making fuels by uh, turning uh, electricity and energy into molecules. Um, Hydrogen is not per, per, hydrogen is not at the top of my list. Uh, personally, I think that making some kind of a molecule that we can use in our internal combustion engines is much smarter because it will keep the existing cars longer on the road. Uh, it, it, it means that their uh, their carbon footprint becomes smaller because uh, when we talk about sustainable fuels, that then this should be a net zero fuel. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, when I talk about any subject like the German BEV meltdown, always consider that I'm talking about the proverbial canary in the coal mine. Um, I don't think that the BEV is the canary in the coal mine. I think that the Western way of doing business is the canary in the coal mine. And that was the central thing that I wanted to share with everybody in that video. Now you've made it to the end of this video. I want to thank my Patreon supporters and in particular the final column, Gordon McDowell, Illyrian, Johannes Ross, Julian Zimmerly Griffith, Stephen, Thorium Energy World, Vexrum, Ben Booth, Carol Ann, Eric Freire, and Todd DeWike. Now, if you want to support the channel, please go to the Patreon page down below. And remember, if you want to help the channel grow, please leave a like and a comment down below. Thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.